Yep. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If you could uh, take your seats, we will go ahead and get started. It is great to see everyone. I appreciate it being able to interact with you out in the atrium there. Hope you had a chance to take a look at our programs of study. Uh, we're very proud of those and appreciate the faculty uh, being out there for us. Welcome to Edison State Community College and our annual State of the College Address. Uh, this is an exciting time for Edison State because it is our 50th anniversary. Uh, you may have heard that already. Uh, back in May of 1973, the college was born. Uh, we received approval as the state's first general and technical college. And then in the fall of 73, we opened our doors to students for the very first time. Uh, and we'll say some more about that. So I, I figured it was appropriate uh, for us to kind of explore what we're saying is our, our motto for the 50th anniversary, a bold legacy and a bright future. Uh, so we'll go through some of that today. Uh, but before I start, I would like to recognize some of the ones in attendance today uh, and starting with our Edison State Community College Board of Trustees. And from the board, we have the chair of the board, Mr. Jim Oda. You can stand briefly, Mr. Oda. Uh, or you can put your hand up. That's, easy. That's fine, too. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Oda. And then we have Mrs. Tammy Baird-Ganley. Uh, Tam Tammy is a former chair of the board and currently serving as trustee. And then I believe those are our two representatives. Uh, Mr. Dr. Tom Milligan may be here a little bit later. Also want to recognize our Edison Foundation board members. Uh, the Edison Foundation does a wonderful job of supporting the college, uh, gathering resources to support student scholarships and other ventures of the college. So if you're on the Edison Foundation board, would you stand please so we could recognize you? Thank you. We also have a number of elected officials and representatives of elected officials. Uh, if you're in that group, would you please stand? Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here today. Appreciate your partnership with Edison State and, and all that you do for the community. Uh, and then we have a number of other partners, partnerships, businesses, schools, uh, who are here today. I just want to say thank you for being here. I talked to most of you before uh, our time started. Uh, we value our partnerships and, you know, we're a close-knit community. So, so thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate that. And then lastly, I want to make sure that I recognize our faculty, staff, and students who are in attendance. Uh, you guys are the backbone of this institution. You're what make us great. Uh, you set us apart from other colleges uh, around the state and around the country. And I really appreciate your dedication, your support. You're probably gonna see some things that, that you know already today in the presentation, but again, really appreciate your support. And it is that spirit of support from our faculty and staff and their dedication uh, to student success that really I think stands out and helps uh, us to see that there is a bold legacy that the college has maintained uh, throughout its history. That uh, dedication to student success is really embodied in the Edison State mission statement, uh, and particularly that last line where we say that uh, our goal is to enable students to complete their educational goals and realize their dreams. And if you were to go around and ask each and one, each one of our faculty and staff members, they would tell you this is why they show up to work every day. They love talking with students. They love helping students. They love seeing uh, the look on students' face when maybe they understand a concept uh, or they accomplish something. It is you know, a great reward for what we do. And so you know, their commitment to helping students succeed and realize their dreams, you know, knowing that, that we're here in our business is to help people better their lives. That's a pretty special thing. And uh, again, that's kind of why we all show up to work uh, each and every day. Um, that bold legacy and that commitment to student success has been evident from 
the start of the college. And so this is kind of where I'll begin taking a look back at this bold legacy of Edison State Community College. Uh, and I'll kind of go through the history in, in somewhat of a, a question and answer format. So if you know the answer to one of these questions, just shout it out. Again, faculty and staff, you've probably seen a few of these, but, but others don't hesitate to, to tell me what you think the answer is. So this photo that you see is uh, where Edison State first started. Our classes were held in this building. Uh, it is in Piqua, and you see the sign down here. So what was the name of this location originally in 1973? I heard somebody. You got it, Spring Street School. So the cool. <laughs> there you go. All right, there you go. Spring Street School, corner of uh, Spring and Ash Streets in Piqua. Um, and so great beginning for us. Fairly humble, but, you know, it was a great place for us to start out. What do you think our enrollment was in that first semester of fall of 1973? What would you guess? Over 300? Okay. That's pretty, that's a bold enrollment, the first term. What do you think? 80. Okay. Actually, that was really close. 309 students in 30 courses. That's a strong start. Uh, I think that demonstrates a need for higher education in the area, even back in, in 1973 at that time. So really strong start. Uh, and you'll see here in just a few minutes where we are today. All right, well, we needed a, a permanent home pretty quickly. And so construction on the Piqua campus began. You see the two photos here, early stage, and then uh, the completed uh, building, uh, which we were very proud of. So when did that uh, construction begin, you think? So college in 1973, how quickly did we go? I think, see, we have a ringer in the audience. And, <laughs> and he knows a few things, particularly about 1975. And you're right, sir. It began in 1975 because there was an interesting connection between events here. And that is that on... At the groundbreaking ceremony in 1975 for this campus, we also celebrated our first commencement, which was a class of one. And that first graduate, a great picture here, looking really good, um, displaying his diploma. Uh, it was an associate of arts degree. And if you notice, he's kind of sitting in a tent because that's the groundbreaking ceremony. Who is this person? Is it is Mr. Greg Simmons. Hey, that deserves a round of applause, Mr. Simmons. It has been great to interact with Greg. Obviously, you've been a great partner to the college. Thank you so much uh, for all that you've done. He actually donated his uh, diploma to the college. We have that in the president's office, and we kind of take a look at that and did work for some of our history of the college uh, based on uh, artifacts that he gave us. So. Uh, thank you, Mr. Simmons. Looking really good there. Looking good today. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I, when I saw that picture, I thought, man, that's a nice head of hair that you had. <laughs> Look good. All right. So we wanted to expand pretty quickly uh, and serve our other areas. And we opened uh, in Greenville. So we looked to Dark County in Greenville. The photo there is not the original building where we started, but uh, that's the current campus on Wagner Avenue. So when do you think that might have been, that we opened up the campus in Greenville? If we got it in before the 80s? What do you think? 79, okay, 1979. That is when we opened in Greenville uh, and we would expand. and. Uh, the Dark County campus, as it was known then, Greenville campus now, uh, has become a real hub for particularly for agriculture and a program there, uh, general education, business, uh, and so a lot of good things that we have going on there in Greenville. Had a lot of growth, actually, in the Green at the Greenville campus this fall. Another milestone uh, in the growth of Edison State was the construction of this uh, part of the building. So as we work from uh, the West Hall here and go back to the east and then move over to the north, this is considered North Hall. Uh, the growth of the college uh, progressed that way. There was the Edison Tower that is above the Yole Atrium. So there's a plaque honoring uh, our president, Dr. Ken Yole, and his time here at the college, spent many years uh, growing the college. And there's a sphere at the top of that Edison Tower 
And this was an architectural feat in its day. Uh, I believe it's over 60 feet high, uh, and it was pretty special. The architects referred to that sphere at the top of the tower as what? I know this is probably the toughest one. How, how are you ever going to get this right? This was, and the year going along with it. How about the year? Is it matter? Would you guess the year that this building was built? See, another ringer out there who knows these things. <laughs> it was called the Pearl of Wisdom, fitting for higher education, right? 1994. Uh, so Dr. Yole had been president for a number of years, and, and this was a, a special project for him uh, at that time. All right, how about more, moving in more to the modern era? What about offering our first online course? When do you think we offered our first online course? It was, the, it was also coincided with the launch of the website. So what would you guess? Internet, what, common in the 90s, early 90s, started to become common? 1997. So made it just under the millennium there. Um, so kind of hard to believe. Wonder what it looked like back in 1997, that, that first online course. All right, how about the Emerson Center? So as we go down, uh, again, toward the east here, the point, uh, when did the Emerson Center open? 07, boy, see, I uh, should, uh, should have not planted him there with the answers. So. 2007, absolutely. <clears throat> and then, you know, our final sort of expansion in the sense of adding campuses was to add our Eaton and Troy campuses. Eaton is on the left here, Troy is on the right. Uh, those two campuses were opened both in the same year. Uh, Eaton is a hub for uh, general education. We're looking to put some uh, health care programs down there, paramedic, EMT, things like that. Uh, Troy is an allied health uh, campus. And so uh, wonderful programs there, physical therapy assistant, medical assisting, phlebotomy, paramedic, EMT. So when did those campuses open? Interesting timing of when these opened. Okay, right before the pandemic, 2019. Uh, so uh, Eaton opened in January of 2019. Uh, Troy Campus opened in July, August time frame for 2019. And so obviously just a few months later, we were, we were dealing with, with COVID at that point. <clears throat> okay, so let's move into some current facts and where we stand. Uh, the college is approved to offer associate degrees, one-year certificates, and short-term certificates. Uh, the certificates have gone well for us, particularly lately. Uh, it seems as though the curriculum uh, is kind of being parsed out uh, in, in chunks more and more, and so we want to offer that to students. We offer them a pathway where they can complete certificates uh, on their way to a degree. And so uh, helping students to meet those milestones is, uh, is really beneficial for them in a lot of different ways. We offer the 39 uh, associate degrees and 70 certificates in seven career pathways. And those first two pathways uh, are known as our university transfer uh, career pathways. The last five are professional and technical programs. Uh, and at Edison State, we're always thinking about, okay, what's the next step for the student? Uh, whether that be the four-year university uh, or out into the workforce, we want them thinking about that, that next step. We do serve the four counties here in Western, West Central Ohio. Very proud of that. We love our communities. Uh, the communities have been very supportive of the college over the years. Uh, again, when we opened the Eaton campus, we picked up uh, Preble County there west of Dayton. I've mentioned the four campuses. Fall enrollment, <clears throat> so our fall 2023 enrollment was very, very strong. Uh, just honestly, in some ways, kind of surprised me. I, I didn't quite expect this much of an increase, a 4% increase in headcount, over 4,500 students. Uh, I would have to look back. I'm, I'm, there may have been a year in 2013 when we were over 4,500 in a fall, but it's been quite a long time. 4,500 students, 37,000 credit hours, and if you look at the, that first line there, the second part, that is up 34% from fall of 2017. So just tremendous growth uh, over this time, a real credit to our faculty and staff and everyone uh, who has supported the college. I like this number of the 37% new students. That's very strong, very healthy. Uh, we've done a good job of retaining students. Our success rate 
has continued to climb. If you look at our fall to fall retention, um, that's kind of hitting new heights. And so really pl pleased with the efforts that we have to, to retain students, help them be successful. You see the 57% uh, credits taken online. That was something that was a trend that was um, there even before COVID, but obviously accelerated during the pandemic. Uh, we're working very hard to make sure that our online offerings are high quality, convenient for students, uh, very clear. That's something that kind of came out in the strategic plan uh, and will be a focus of that plan. You see some of the programmatic increases that we had. And again, just wonderful faculty advisors who work with students here. Uh, the ones I chose here on the screen are somewhere between 27 and 77 percent growth. Uh, and if you look at uh, criminal justice, so I believe that was our top growth area at 77% growth in credit hours. Uh, and I know Laura Larger was here earlier. She was out uh, front uh, with our uh, criminal justice program and, and appreciate your work on that. We're very proud of our Pathway Portal uh, partnership with Franklin University. And they, they weren't able to join us today, I don't believe, but um, they send their support. The Pathway Portal is an electronic system that allows students to really have kind of one experience with two institutions. So they start with Edison State, they choose to enter this Pathway Portal, and immediately it starts tracking their progress electronically uh, through their associate degree here at Edison State, and then on to the bachelor's degree. And it actually gives them options to choose, uh, and it'll line up and say, okay, this bachelor's degree is uh, your shortest path. And here are seven others uh, that are similar to that. So it's a great system uh, built by Franklin University. Um, we've enjoyed their partnership. Uh, they support us there at the Troy campus as well. And then we do have our friends from Upper Valley Career Center here today. Uh, it's, good to, it's good to see you. So we have a great partnership with Upper Valley. Uh, their teacher academy is located here on the campus. And I believe uh, you all have seen growth in the Teacher Academy since it, it came here to Edison State. Uh, Jason is nodding, so that's, that's good news. So really enjoy hosting that group. It's good, great to have them on campus. Um, this fall, they have started a first responder program, and we're hosting that as well. They're in some temporary space uh, for the time being, but we are renovating our 400 wing. Uh, of the building, and it's going to be a beautiful space for both that first responder program and then our criminal justice program, as well as our police academy. Uh, police academy is kind of spread out across the building at this point. Uh, in the new space, they'll be ha they'll be able to have all of their work done of classes uh, there in the lab and in the classroom. They're going to do mock investigations, um, um, searches, things like that. So we're really excited about that space coming online uh, here a little later this term. <clears throat> student services uh, and what we offer for our students beyond the classroom. Back during the pandemic, uh, a lot of colleges dropped their athletics programs uh, and really never to return. But we did the opposite. Edison State committed to our athletics programs. Uh, we now have five sports. And I'm so glad that we made that commitment because those student athletes are just add so much to the culture of Edison State. Uh, they're here on campus a lot. There are over, I think we're at a little over 100, right, Justin? Uh, over 100 student athletes. Uh, they're full-time students. They're with us. They are in the library. They were in the library uh, each and every day. And just really appreciate all that they add to the culture. Their competitiveness on the court. Uh, every year we're sending teams to the playoffs. And uh, I think it was two years ago we had our women's basketball team that reached the national tournament. So uh, things are going well on the sports side here at the college. And actually tonight we have uh, our Charger Country uh, celebration for a volleyball game, a volleyball game tonight. Uh, so if you're interested in that. And then students' needs beyond the classroom. <laughs> That's another thing that we saw during the pandemic where needs that we just didn't even imagine were out there. Uh, and so we made a concentrated effort to help students beyond the classroom because we know that, you know, if a student is worried about food or other insecurities, childcare, other types of things, they're not able to be a good student. Uh, so we opened a, a student uh, food pantry and resource room. Students can go in there at any time, pick up something to eat, 
Uh, maybe there's something that they need around the house, a toiletry item, whatever it might be. Uh, we've had a lot of use and we've had close to 100,000 items taken from uh, that store. It's all free. Um, we continue to replenish that from the, um, from the work of our faculty and staff here. So concentrating on student needs. And that's all a part of our guided pathways approach to student success here at the college. Guided Pathways is a national phenomenon. It's a philosophy that was developed by the college, Community College Research Center. Uh, and Edison State has ascribed to that, and we've implemented that. Uh, again, we've seen success in our retention rates. And the idea is to help a student connect with a career as soon as they walk in the doors, even at the recruiting phase, to get them thinking about, okay, what is my dream going to be? What is that better life going to look like for me? What is that job going to be? And whether that path takes them to the four-year school or directly to work, uh, that's how we're motivating students uh, when they come to us. The pathway is laid out for them. They have their courses laid out semester by semester. There are milestones uh, identified for them so that they can be on track for their career. And so that, that guided pathways approach, they have the support that they need all along the way for tutoring or whatever it might be. Um, so again, obviously student success, a major focus for us. So let's think about the bright future then, uh, kind of what we have coming up. Obviously uh, this entire year, we're celebrating the 50th anniversary. We kicked it off back in June um, with our 50 fests and, and maybe some of you were able to attend that. It was a great time where we had uh, food trucks here. We had musical acts uh, in our uh, courtyard area, and we're going to continue that celebration throughout the year. Uh, coming up at the in May, we have the 50th anniversary gala. That will be our culmination. Um, May the 10th is commencement, and then the next day we're going to have a big party. Uh, and so you'll, I think you'll like to see what we have planned. There's pretty exciting things that we'll have there uh, on that Saturday, May 11th. So. So already thinking ahead. The, um, this is really the perfect time for the college to launch the strategic plan, our 2023 to 2026 strategic plan. Um, I think it has the right projects. It's focused. Uh, it is exactly what we need to propel the college into the future. Uh, you have a copy of that plan on your chair when you, when you came in today. It focuses on three areas funding innovation, supporting instructional excellence, and demonstrating value through outreach. And there are two words there, the excellence and innovation. Uh, that is our focus and, and sort of the characteristics that we want to be known for. Uh, we understand that we have to keep pressing forward, that we can't sit still, we have to evolve uh, so that we can uh, grow and, and be prosperous into the future. So uh, the motto of the plan is taking excellence and innovation to the next level. Uh, we recognize that legacy that we have, and so we're looking for that uh, in the future plan. So take a look at that. There are some specific projects that you'll see, but again, dedicated to uh, in excellence in education and higher education and supporting students. We have some renovation projects uh, going on here at the college, several in the works. Uh, several that are uh, actually being completed uh, and, and then starting out. I mentioned the criminal justice classroom that's down in our 400 wing in the East Hall um, <clears throat> and that partnership with Upper Valley. This is also where we will house our virtual reality training equipment and software uh, from the Pitch Piqua event. And so really appreciate uh, Pitch Piqua and, and providing the funds for that. That's going to be so cool uh, to have that resource available for our students. Uh, we're going to have an open house, I believe, maybe in December. Uh, Andy, I think, is what we're looking at. We'll open that space. We'll let the community come in, uh, try out the virtual reality equipment, uh, and see how that is. So looking forward to that. And again, the expansion of criminal justice uh, goes along well with that. Uh, our library and Emerson Center is continuing renovation. We had a bit of a water problem back uh, last December, a little bit of a flood there, uh, pipe burst and, and flooded the library. But, you know, we looked at it as an opportunity uh, to refurbish the library and parts of the Emerson Center. We put down new carpet. We got new furniture. Uh, so it really looks great down there. If you have the chance, it's just a, a short walk down the way. 
Uh, we're going to continue that renovation, spruce up the, the Emerson Center. So we're looking, looking forward to that. And then another one that is really significant for us is the new locker rooms for our student athletes. Uh, we are in desperate need of new space for uh, our student athletes. That's going to be new square footage on the west side of the gym. So uh, on that far side from where we're sitting. Uh, that's something that, again, has been needed. We have uh, when we play basketball games, we have four teams in the building and, and use, needing locker room facilities. We only have two locker rooms. So uh, you can imagine some of the logistics that have to happen there. So we're, we're looking forward to that project starting pretty soon. <clears throat> we have a site visit coming up, kind of a major thing for us. Uh, this is our 10-year reaccreditation site visit from the Higher Learning Commission. The Higher Learning Commission provides our general accreditation, and they are the ones who uh, give us access to federal financial aid. So this is big. Um, a lot of folks have been working already to prepare for this visit. So it will be <clears throat> at the end of February. Um, teams are working to create, uh, it's called the assurance argument. And so this assurance argument basically provides a narrative that explains our adherence to five criteria that the HLC uses to evaluate us. Uh, and we're doing really well. Uh, there's another probably three or 400 pages of evidence that is used then to support that assurance argument. So this is a big thing for us. Again, it only happens every 10 years, uh, once every 10 years. So we're, we're looking forward to it, but uh, you know, definitely preparing for it. Uh, think about us when it comes to, to the late February timeframe. The engineering lab renovation. So we have plans uh, to modernize our engineering lab. We have outstanding equipment in the engineering lab. If you go in there, uh, the robots, the CNC machines uh, are pretty amazing. We actually just got two new CNC machines. They're huge. They're beautiful. Uh, but we need the space around them to kind of match uh, that modern equipment. So we're going to work on that. We have some designs uh, already kind of thinking about. We'll put those on paper uh, and working to raise funds for that engineering lab renovation. We're going to open a new program, <clears throat> a respiratory care program. Our healthcare partners came to us uh, a couple years ago and just said, you know, we have a great need for respiratory care technicians in this area. I think COVID obviously precipitated that to some degree. Uh, but the need is ongoing here uh, for respiratory care technicians. So our plan is to open that program in fall of next year. We have approval from the state. Uh, we have our HLC approval. And we are working now on constructing our respiratory care lab. Uh, so gathering the equipment that we need and doing that renovation, that's going to be located at the far end of the point, uh, the east end there. So we'll be happy to locate another health science program uh, in that area. And then a big one, uh, the bachelor's degree in nursing. And here in just a few minutes, we're going to focus a lot more on this bachelor's degree. Uh, but we are on track to open that program in fall of next year as well. Uh, we received our approval from the state, which was sort of the first major step in that process. Uh, we just hit the button, and I think uh, uh, Dr. Wirtz is, is not with us today, but she hit the button in submitting the approval to uh, the Higher Learning Commission for that program. And so we're, our guidance has been that we'll probably have that approval by the end of the calendar year, so that then we'll be able to start recruiting, uh, getting students in place for that bachelor's degree in nursing uh, program. So very excited about that. Along with that, um, we're trying to increase our cohort size of our associate degree uh, uh, nursing program. We understand there's a great need for nurses in the area, uh, just huge. I mean, it's, it's kind of staggering some of the numbers that you see in terms of the need. And so we're going to work on a nursing wing addition. It's a little over 6,000 square feet. Uh, this will be new square footage out on the east side of the nursing wing. Uh, and so we already have plans for that. They're beautiful. It's a, it's a wonderful space, and it will accommodate this expansion as well as our expansion into a bachelor's degree. I think all that is pretty good evidence that we have a bold legacy and a bright future here at the college. And so, you know, that's what we're celebrating this year. And I want to focus in on a particular program, this bachelor's degree, because 
it's a huge change for the institution. So I'm actually gonna, gonna call up my folks to bring out the furniture and transform our stage here. And I'm gonna sit down with Dr. Andy Runyon. He's gonna come to the stage. And uh, we're gonna talk about this bachelor's degree in nursing. Dr. Runyon is the Dean of our professional and technical programs. And he's put a lot of time and effort uh, both into the bachelor's degree as well as the respiratory care program. Uh, so we'll, we'll sit down and talk a little bit. We'll do questions here after Andy and I finish our discussion. So uh, there are note cards on your chair or the chair next to you maybe, if you would. Write down a question, uh, and we'll have folks coming around a little bit later to gather those and read those, and we'll do a question and answer time. So. All right, you Good ready morning. to go? How's Good it going? Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm doing okay. Good. So expert on the bachelor's degree. Expert. Well, I, I have lots of experts that help me with yeah. this stuff. How about well, that? I, I, I can understand <laughs> that. that. That makes sense. Well, I'll just start out, and I'll just kind of ask the question, why, why are we developing a bachelor's degree in nursing? Well, you told us to, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> See, I knew he was going to go off script, and I got to be prepared for this, huh? Yes. You know how it is. Yes, I did ask yeah, the request that we do this. <laughs> well, a lot of local organizations obviously were asking us to do it. Um, there is a lot of demand. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities for students that go on and get the bachelor's degree. And actually, we surveyed our students, both past students and current students, and found that if we put it together, they would take it here. They want something that's local, close to home, in an institution they're comfortable with, and at a good price they can afford. So sure. we thought it a good opportunity for us. Okay, that makes sense. <clears throat> that's a good reason too. Yeah, other than thank me you. telling you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, what did the process look like to kind of develop that bachelor's degree? Again, uh, the whole thing really started with industry demand. Uh, a lot of folks from industry went all the way to the legislature saying, we need this. We need more nurses. We need them to be able to move up and on into the baccalaureate programs. So the legislature actually enacted the ability for community colleges to add the baccalaureate degree. Uh, with that happening, we took a look at it and decided, okay, yes, this is something we should pursue. Uh, one of the requirements that scared me a little bit was we had to go out and talk to all of the existing programs or many of the existing competing programs uh, in the state. So we had to get together with, we talked to the dean at Wright State, we talked to the dean at Ohio State, and going into that meeting I was thinking, oh no, they are going to rip us apart. But it actually was interesting, they were very supportive. Um, they knew the demand out there, they knew that there were lots of individuals who are able to do this and mm -hmm. so did not see us as competitors at all in that process. So we kept on rolling forward. We put in an application to the state of Ohio. Uh, Jill Bob, our faculty, did a great job of putting that information together. We also called in a former staff person, Gwen Stevenson, mm -hmm. who uh, helped us with some consulting to put that together as well. So the application to the state, as you had said, has been put in and approved. Um, our curriculum committee just last Friday approved all of the courses and the curriculum for the program. So that allowed us to go to the HLC and work towards that approval. And uh, so we have everything rolling and hoping to get everything started in fall of 24, as you yeah. said. Very good. And that is, you know, Andy's right. That was a nerve wracking process uh, to kind of go out and make sure that we have the support, particularly of the four year schools. We have great partners uh, when it comes to nursing and we uh, have students transfer on and, and um, you know, get that bachelor's degree in nursing. And so we don't want to step on those toes. There's room for everyone. Uh, the need is so great. So, so thank you. All right. So in the process, then uh, I'm sure you looked at resources and things yes. like that. What, right. what new faculty or staff do you think the college is going to hire? Well, if you're asking, we'll take five new faculty. Five. Is that <laughs> No, not five. Okay. Well, not five. Realistically. Not five. And do you um, have approval for that? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> We did the financial analysis, yes. Uh, we definitely need a new director. Uh, but one of the fortunate things is all of our faculty are qualified to teach at the baccalaureate level. Our current faculty all have the master's degrees, the experience requirements, so they will be able to assist in teaching. Yes, they have a full-time job currently, uh, but we are assuming, and we've talked to a number of them, some will be interested in teaching uh, part-time within that program as well. So. One full-time director that we will bring on, hopefully um, 
start hiring here shortly. And then we anticipate as the program grows, we're going to need at least one additional full-time faculty member after a year or two. So at least two here to begin with, uh, but we'll also be looking for other adjuncts, I would say, as well, uh, to be able to fill some of those classes because we want a good bit of diversity in who's teaching the classes and and uh, what their experiences are as part of the program. Okay, all right. And we do have a few of our nursing faculty I see sitting down here in front. Thank you so much. I know this is a big change for you all and uh, yeah, excited about that. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, so faculty, staff, what about space, equipment? What uh, will the program require in terms of space and equipment? Well, it shouldn't be a surprise to anyone. You mentioned it here today. We are looking at expanding healthcare programs overall because there is that level of demand. Um, the respiratory care program will require new space. Uh, I would really love to see our baccalaureate or our, excuse me, our associate degree nursing program expand by at least 50%. Um, there is that much demand out there uh, and we need to keep people moving into that pipeline. So between that expansion and the addition of this baccalaureate program, we will need more space, more lab space, uh, more space for students um, we anticipate there could be multiple starts to this bachelor's okay. degree program throughout the year. So as that grows, yes, we definitely will need uh, more space. And we are currently working with architects to lay out uh, what that space would look like, as you heard a little bit earlier here. And we'll be looking at fundraising, too, to be able to uh, make that space a reality. Okay. All right. And in case you're interested, fundraising opportunity. Perfect. Right. 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 Okay. Get your name on the building. Right? There you go. <laughs> so what about uh, the students experience? And so the classes that they will take, you know, it's a big step going into a bachelor's degree. What does the curriculum look like? Yeah. Well, a bachelor's degree program is uh, at least 120 credits. Okay. Our associate degree students now get 65 credits. And completing that will be one of the requirements. This is actually a degree completion program going from the ADN to the Bachelor of Science in Nursing. So that requires those additional credits. Uh, students are going to be taking seven additional nursing classes. Uh, and actually, those are going to come in eight-week modules. Um, so over a uh, four-term sequence. So if you start in the fall, you would be done the end of the next fall. And in that time, you will get those seven additional nursing classes, plus you'll be taking additional gen ed and basic related classes. Some of those are classes that our faculty have selected. Uh, things like basic nutrition, lifespan psychology have been selected by the program. Others are ones that the students will be able to choose. What gen ed classes have you not taken that you would like to take? The advantage, though, is that those are all classes that we are currently teaching in the curriculum. We can use the gen ed classes that we have, the lifespan psychology class, our own basic nutrition class, and allow students to take those at the same price that the associate degree students are taking those classes. Okay. So we're not charging more? N well, again, we're not allowed. Okay. Not because you said, because the legislature oh, okay. said. All right. I guess, I guess we have to listen to them. <laughs> That is interesting. And, you know, every time I talk with Andy, I learn a little bit more about the program, the eight week format. That's uh, that was a piece of information I did not know previously. So, OK, thank you. Uh, so employers, I know they're critical to any program. What will uh, their role be in the new bachelor's degree? Well, the first thing to me that comes to mind is the individuals that are taking this program will already be working. Yeah. Uh, they will be nurses out working in the field for the most part. Um, so they will have their employers who they are working with, who in many cases will be supporting them in taking this degree program as well. So that provides a direct relationship and a lot of great experiences that our students can take into the workplace, but the students bring those experiences here as well. And that provides us good interaction with their supervisors and their employers also. Um, as I mentioned, we have a lot of demand from those employers. Yeah. They are asking us to do this as well as other healthcare programs. So we've had lots of interaction with them and we pull them in into our advisory committees. Uh, we want them to have a voice in what the curriculum is, what the programs are, how the programs will expand. So we do have them on our advisory committees mm -hmm. and uh, want to make sure that that continues for this program as well. Okay. Very good. Very good. Employers critical to us. 
you had already mentioned that the cost will be the same. Can you say any more about that from the student's perspective, what that will look like? Well, that obviously, as we surveyed students, that was a big positive. Okay. Uh, when they go out now looking at other uh, online programs or even face-to-face -face programs, they are usually at the four-year institutions. Um, but as I mentioned, the legislature did say, if you are going to do this as a community college, it cannot be for additional tuition. So it will be at our same tuition. Scholarships will be available. Um, so that's a pretty good price if you compare with other programs from across the state. Okay. All right. Have you told our CFO that yet? I, you know, I think he's aware. Is he aware? Is he okay, aware? good. Good. He's not planning on uh, I showed money. him the financial analysis. Okay, so good. I, good. I think we'll be good. good. All right. Well, okay. So we know it's going, our plan is to start in fall of 2024. Right. Um, what will the completion look like then for a student? How long will it take them to go through the program? So again, about four terms is the idea, and that includes the summer term. So okay. starting in fall, fall, spring, uh, one seven or one eight week course in the summer, then two eight week nursing courses in that next fall, and they should be ready to graduate. The advantage of that uh, is, too, that we could start, if we wanted to, every term, if we really wanted to, we could even start a new cohort every eight weeks. Okay. Um, I think it'll be a while before we get there, yeah. but I could see us having multiple starts throughout the year, depending on how the program grows. So uh, just over 18 months. Okay. Pretty quick that's turnaround. A pretty, yeah, that's a short timeline. It's good. Uh, so how do students go about kind of applying for the program, being admitted? Um, you know, how many will accept the first year? What does that look like? We will have an application process. Okay. It will be somewhat a competitive application process, just depending on how many folks we get interested in. Um, we, the students are required, as I said, to have the associate degree before they apply. Uh, and be a registered nurse. Okay. So yeah. that will be one of the application requirements. We anticipate that a lot of the students are gonna come from our own program. Right. Uh, they, in our survey, they told us that. Yes, they are interested. At the same time, we anticipate uh, other nurses coming in or being here and being interested in the program. We are not going to have a priority for our own students. Uh, everyone will be applying and pretty much on an even footing when they come in, but we will be looking at what experience do they have, how well did they do in the associate degree program. So there will be some competitive aspects of that application process. Okay. All right. And how many do you expect in uh, year one? We're looking at starting about 15 students in the first term. That's just our guess as we've looked at it financially. Yeah. Uh, we could have more than that. Okay. Uh, as we look at growth, the analysis that we put together would grow to 35 within about four or five years. Yeah. Um, starting. Yeah. So that's 35 starting each um, cohort or each year. And uh, so we could have 60 some students participating at a time yeah. in the program. So that's, it could get yeah. pretty good size. That's very strong. Okay. That sounds good. So obviously we're always trying to think about benefits for the students and uh, kind of the outcome and their success. So what would you say are the, the greatest benefits and um, you know outcomes for the students from the program? I think as the employers talk to the legislature, talk to us about what those opportunities are, that is really the growth path for nurses going from the associate degree up into the baccalaureate program. They can be leaders within uh, the institution where they are working. They can then from there go into different specializations, um, things like going on for a master's degree. So the master of science in nursing, okay. becoming a nurse practitioner would be an option again, beyond the baccalaureate program or different other areas of specialty. Um, those of you familiar with the nursing program know that there's lots of different areas that nurses can get into. And uh, with the baccalaureate program, that's that kind of next step beyond the associate degree okay. to really allow them to go whatever direction they choose okay. within the discipline. Yeah. So lots okay. of opportunity. All right. That's great to hear, you know, that success for students and that opportunity to move forward. So, okay. Does that cover it pretty much? I, it, pretty much. I was thinking that I'd throw one back at you if okay. I could. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Um, this is the first bachelor's, bachelor's degree for the institution. Mm -hmm. Just curious how you see that change impacting the institution as a whole. 
very different for us. Yeah, I know. I have a little bit of experience with a bachelor's degree at two-year colleges in my past. Um, I guess I feel like it changes the culture of the institution. It really does. Um, when we offer that bachelor's degree uh, and, and that first graduate comes forward, we're no longer just a two-year institution. Uh, obviously, we'll always value that role uh, and emphasize the two-year degree and the certificates, but you know, we're a bachelor's granting institution. Uh, that's a big thing. That's a big change uh, for any college. Uh, and I could even see it possibly opening pathways to other bachelor's degrees. Um, the state does allow community colleges to, to offer applied bachelor's degrees. Uh, we've done some research on those in the past and, and really kind of haven't found the right fit. Uh, the nursing degree is, is kind of our first one that we've found that works well. But again, after this analysis, I, I feel like maybe there are other opportunities. So you ready to maybe take that on? I am sure we will, Will. <laughs> okay. All right. Answered that one well. You got, got the right answer on that. One, so. All right. Okay. All, all right. You don't have Thank any others you. for me. You're good? Okay. I think I'm good. At okay. This all right. Uh, questions from the audience here. We're about to wrap up our time. Chris, I, I did okay. have one here that was handed to me. It says, okay. What will the format of the Bachelors of Nursing be? The format. The, the format. format. So I mentioned the um, eight-week classes. Uh, I like to think of it as a seminar model. It's quite honestly, as I went through my doctorate, uh, it was great. We actually got together at the beginning of every term to meet each other for one, uh, be able to assign projects together, so be able to work together on projects that may be assigned. So um, we are looking at having some kind of a convening of the students at the beginning, either of each term, maybe once a year, that exactly hasn't been decided yet. But then most of the coursework is going to be online. We need that flexibility. Uh, students need that flexibility because they will be working at the same time. But I think it's important that they get together. That helps with retention. It helps to say, yes, I belong to a program. It's not just all an online kind of activity, but getting to know each other, getting to know my fellow students, faculty being able to have some face-to-face -face time with those students is important. So yeah, I, I think of it kind of as a seminar model. That okay. might be a day, it might be a weekend, uh, but from there, once they go from there, they are doing the course online with all that flexibility. Okay, yep, yep. convenient. It's a good, very good question. Good. Okay. Other questions? I have one more here. It says, will classes be um, conducted both day and evenings? For the bachelor's degree? For the bachelor's degree. Okay. Because it is online, um, you can do it whenever. I would see the seminars that I talked about being primarily during the day. Um, again, when I did something similar, we stayed in Florida for a weekend. Sorry, it's probably not going to be in Florida. <laughs> But um, just being able to spend that time together, probably for a full day, having some meals together to get started. From there, it's all online, so it would really be up to you as to when you participate. Maybe even a weekend, potentially. Yeah, it could like be a weekend. weekend. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah. Good. One more here. It says, of the 4,500 students enrolled, what percentage are high school college credit plus are enrolled in the college credit plus program? Yeah, good question. So we're sitting at about probably around 57, 58% of our total enrollment are, are College Credit Plus students. Uh, again, that's something that the college committed to a number of years ago. Uh, we love our CCP students. Uh, you know, they take our courses in the high school. They take courses here on campus and online. Uh, so, so we have a strong CCP contingent. Uh, and we see that as an advantage uh, because we uh, have those great partnerships with high schools, and we want to see them go on, finish their degree at Edison State, and then go on for the four-year degree. Uh, you know, if they don't do that, if they choose to go directly to the four-year, that's okay, too, uh, because, again, that's success for the student, and that's what we're all about. So, yeah, so 57 58% is where we stand currently. Good, a numbers question. I'm glad I knew that number. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> question. Yes, sir. Mr. Stan. Um, I think the apprenticeship model in nursing 
Um, and Brandy, I'm going to look at her so she can say, no, 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 you're wrong about this. <laughs> um, I wouldn't say the apprenticeship model has taken off because it is so much a clinically driven kind of activity. So they are definitely out in, cl in the clinical setting pretty much throughout their program. Um, and then when they move into the hospital setting, pretty much every hospital has lots of orientation, lots of ongoing training, those types of things. So I wouldn't say it is the apprenticeship model that is the same that we have, say, in the manufacturing setting. Uh, but they definitely are getting that kind of mentorship when they either hear or when they are out uh, in the hospital setting. Our faculty monitor the students and mentor the students when they are in that clinical setting and the staff at the hospitals uh, do as well. So that is definitely going on. Good. Strong work-based learning components to all programs. Definitely. Good. Other questions? These are good. Okay. All right. <clears throat> all right. Andy, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, much. everyone, for attending. It was great to have you here. <laughs> have a good rest of your day. Take care.